What up, Giants fans? It is your boy, Bad Dog, here with another New York Giants video. It's been a while since I've done a Giants video because there wasn't much to talk about. And then, obviously, they had a game Monday night. Wasn't able to cover the game Monday night because I was busy covering my bum-ass Yankees. But last night, the Yankees actually gave me some hope as they were able to beat the Dodgers 11-4. Uh, to 4. And hopefully tonight, I'll be live at 8 o'clock for that game. And come by and watch it. I'll be live with Louis T on the Super Friends channel. we got to talk about Giants Commanders. I'll be live on the new Giants Collective channel uh, for the Giants round. It'll be our third episode. I'll be live there at 7, and then I'll be back here at 8 o'clock. I'm very busy tomorrow. I'm a very busy guy. But I love it because it is a good time of year. Basketball just got started. The Yankees are in the World Series. And then we have our New York Giants. The New York Giants suck. Garbage. Ass. Ass. That game is just typical New York Giants. You know, I don't... How many pre-snap penalties can you have in a game? When the Giants go over the record, how many ineligible man downfields have the Giants had this year on big plays? On, on not screen passes. I understand the screen pass that can happen if it kind of gets blown up. And it's a timing play. The linemen are saying, well, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1, and they go, and something messes up. Same thing with the punter. You know, you you count and you go. If something messes up and the timing's off, I can see it. But on slant patterns, on just regular out patterns, how does this happen? How many illegal shifts are the Giants going to have? Took away a, a, a freaking touchdown from us last night. Or, I'm sorry, Monday night. Took it away. How many times has this happened? Bad teams do this shit. Bad teams have penalties that take points off the board. Bad teams have penalties that take third and ones to third and 11s. Daniel Jones got hammered again last night. It was unbelievable, man. I, I just, I don't understand what the Giants are doing. And, and on the punt, on the punt return for a touchdown, it is hilarious to me that they return, Austin returns it for a touchdown, and the Giants get an illegal formation on a punt. How the hell do you get an illegal formation on a punt? Only the Giants do this shit. Only the Giants. Yeah, listen, they fought, they battled Pittsburgh. It was a battle of field goals in the first half. That punt return touchdown was kind of a, it was a backbreaker, no question about it. But as soon as the flag comes out, I'm like, oh, that's on Pittsburgh. Obviously, because every time there's a flag on a kick return, it's always on the receiving team. Nope, not with the Giants. Not with the Giants. Illegal formation, kicking team, penalty decline, touchdown. Go figure it out. And then at the end of the game, of course, you know, like Daniel Jones played well. Yeah, Daniel Jones made a couple of nice throws. He does that once in a while anyway. But the Giants who are down by – well, one thing. Let me say this. Tyrone Tracy is a player. Tyrone Tracy is a player. Now, hopefully that concussion is not too serious. That kid can freaking play. Joe Shane did a really good job in this draft. Now, I know Drew Phillips had a rough one last night, but Drew Phillips has been great this year. Tyler Newbin has been great this year. Malik Neighbors looks great this year. Malik Neighbors was very good again on Monday. And Tyrone Tracy, he can play. I mean, listen, man, I have a lot of Eagles fans and Commanders fans, Cowboys fans that, inter that I interact on here. And almost every one of those guys say, Bad, you got something to Tyrell Tracy. Like, he's a good player. Like, when you get respect from the other opposing fan bases in your division and they see the kid and, like, he can play, man. That's, I think that speaks volumes. I think Joe Shane's had a good draft. But the Giants get that touchdown, big 45-yard touchdown from Tyrell Tracy. And they go for two. Now, I don't know why they go for two there. I hate that. Well, you know, if you go for two, you, you know, you can, you know, be down by six and you can win with a touchdown. And if you miss it, you know, you know that you need eight points in order to tie the game up because you're going to have to go for a two-point conversion at some time anyway. I hate analytics. I hate when analytics do that shit. Just kick the extra point. You're the Giants, man. And they run some swinging gate play where none of the people moved because the timing's off. Because they didn't get the snap count or the center didn't get the snap count. The play was blown up immediately. I have never seen Daniel Jones that man in my life. He was pissed. He was mad. 
He was mad. Oh, what the hell that was? You're you're the you're the Giants. You're two and five. Don't get cute. You have a hard enough time doing basic shit. Don't don't sit there and act like oh, let's let's run this one out of the playbook. That was really stupid. I I was really dumb. It comes down to the end of the game. Looks like Pittsburgh is going to put it away. They're up by eight points. They're going to put it away. They're up twenty six eighteen. Russell Wilson fumbles. Giants get the ball. They get inside Pittsburgh territory. And Daniel Jones gives it right back. Fumble. Right back. Giants get another opportunity to drive down the field and attempt to tie the game. And Daniel Jones on a terrible throw throws a terrible interception. And another night where Daniel Jones doesn't score a freaking touchdown. And Tyrone Tracy's was the first touchdown the Giants offense has had in 24 drives. This offense is absolutely putrid. As Mike Francesa would say, it's garbage. It is increasingly difficult to watch. And what I want to know, I'm not saying Evan Neal is the answer. By any stretch of the imagination, Kevin Neal has been a disaster, a bust. He stinks. He had talked shit about fans flipping burgers. Evan Neal should be flipping burgers, in my opinion. However, can you explain to me how you take a guy, seventh overall, who was you know, touted as one of the best tackles coming out of the draft. He played left tackle at Alabama. You lost your left tackle for the entire season, our best lineman with a foot surgery, with foot surgery, foot injury, foot injury, easy for me to say. You lose him. You put Josh Rizzuto over there, who was drafted as a guard. He's out of position. He's getting his ass beat over there. He's getting killed. So the Giants answer... Let's go get Christopher Hubbard. He was horrible. He got beat on every snap. Why in the hell do you not at least try Evan Neal over there? Did Evan Neal kick your dog? Does Evan Neal have nudes of your wife? What the hell, man? Give him a chance. I'm not saying he's going to be great. But holy shit, you drafted him seventh overall. I'd rather have Evan Neal over there than Azuda or Christopher Hubbard. Why is he not playing? Give him a chance. Shit, if he produces, if he's good, you can trade him and get uh, draft value. You get draft value. If he ended up being a good left tackle, you get something for him. He's running away on the bench. He's obviously not coming back here. At least see what he does. Can he be worse? He can't be worse. He cannot be worse. You have nothing to lose there. You're two and six. Put the guy out there and let's see what the hell he can do. We have the commanders this week. The commanders are flying high. I've said for weeks, over a month now, that they're the best team in the East. They are. The Eagles are looking a little bit better offensively, which I don't like that shit at all. I freaking hate them. I can't wait to the Commanders and Eagles play. Commanders had it. That was a hell of a game. I don't know if anybody watched that game. It was a hell of a game. That Commanders-Bears game was awesome. Um, but, you know, that's a tough game. We'll probably be 2-7, and seven, and then we have the Panthers in Germany, and we know the Panthers stink. And it'll be interesting to see exactly how this plays out because that could be for draft position. It sucks to say this 10 games into the season, but if you're 2-7 and seven and the Panthers are 1-8, and eight, and you're going head to head with the Panthers, um, that, that that's going to determine draft position. And I'm not saying that the Giants should tank. I'm not telling them to tank. I'm not going to be hurt if they do. I, I'm, gonna, I'm at that point because I see what these quarterbacks are doing. Last year, I was all about, yeah, Tommy DeVito, man, nice story. That was cool. We had fun. We ended up with Daniel Jones again. And I look at what Caleb Williams is doing for the Bears. And I look at what Jaden Daniels is doing for Washington. Then I look at what Drake May is doing for, um, you know, New England. And New England's a really bad team, but he's played well. 
Um, I, I have to give I, not that we could have got him. I didn't want this guy, but uh, Bo Nix has played much better. Give him credit. I, I thought he'd be terrible. He's played much better recently. We haven't seen Michael Penix yet, but those those are guys I did not want. But seeing what what quarterbacks can do to a team, Giants need a quarterback, man. They need a quarterback. They need a fresh start there. Whether that's it, whether it's Daniel Jones's fault or not, you can point the finger at whoever the hell you want to when it comes to Daniel Jones. But if the Giants are going to turn it around, they need a fresh start. They they need it there. I know there's no question about this. He's got to go. It's 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 done. I think after the Panthers game, I think Daniel Jones is benched. I think that's when they do it. I really do. I think Drew Locke plays the rest of the year. I think the Giants want to get rid of Daniel Jones. I don't think they want him to be there next year, and they certainly don't want to have to pay him some insurance clause in this contract. It's going to take up a lot of their cap space. So the smart thing to do after Carolina is to bench him. You put Drew Locke out there. You let Drew Locke play. You see what the hell you got. But why Evan Neal doesn't play left tackle, I have no idea. You guys suck. You're two and six. You're two and six every freaking year, it seems. Every time you make a good play, it gets called back because of a freaking penalty. You know, it's it's just sickening on a consistent basis. It's sickening. I don't expect the Giants to win. And this sucks because, for the most part, the team's been pretty healthy. Daniel Jones has been healthy all year. Uh, Malik Neighbors missed a couple games, obviously. But for the most part, they, they've been pretty healthy. Every team has injuries. And they suck again. So, you know... It's just, a, it's a lousy team, but every week you go in figuring, yep, going to lose, going to lose, going to lose. Same feeling I had in 2021. Every week we're going to lose. We're going to find a way to lose. Oh, they competed. They played much better than I, like Joe Buck and Trey. Well, they, they, you know, they fought, they did this. No, but Troy Aikman said, there's no more victories. There's no moral victories. You're two and six. You guys are ass. Again, again, terrible, embarrassing. Neil Jones is one in 15. On primetime games. One and 15. You can't make that up. That is disgusting. The Giants are disgusting. But I will be back covering them. The only reason I didn't cover them is people like, oh, you gave up on the G, gave up on the Giants. I didn't give up on doing Giants content. The Yankees are in a World Series, man. The Yankees are my favorite team. The Yankees are playing for a championship, something the Giants haven't done in 12 years. So, of course, I'm going to cover the Yankees World Series. But I'll be back. The next two weeks, it'll be on my channel. We'll get Washington. We'll get Carolina. We'll get to watch it together. And I love it. We'll get to watch the train wreck together. Because that's what they are. You can't turn away. You want to turn away. You don't want to look at it. But you're just like, you just can't help it. You just got to see how they screw it up this week. Anyway, that's all I got in this video. If you made it 13 and a half minutes, you guys are troopers. This video is brought to you by the good people at BetUS. You can go to BetUS, enter the promo code YouTube150. You get a 150% match deposit bonus on your first deposit, a 125% match deposit bonus on your second and third deposits, all the way up to $2,000 bonus cash. You get great customer service. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. You get fast payouts within 24 hours. You get 10% gambler's insurance. Get so net losses as long as you stay active every six months. Terms and conditions apply. And when you gamble, please do so responsibly. Never bet more than you can afford to lose. Uh, check out BetUS. Check out the Giants. They suck. Check out Giants Collective. I'm going to leave the, I'm going to pin the comment down below. Subscribe to that channel. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yankees, me and Louis T, Giants round the table. I'm a busy man, and I'll see you tomorrow night for one of them, hopefully, maybe all three. If you guys like Bad Dog, you're going to have your full share of them tomorrow. I'll see you then. It's Bad Diggy Dizzle. I'm out. Peace.